Hello everybody, this is me Chris. I'm um, here to have another demonstration regarding uh, cryptography. Uh, I've done previous videos with uh, MD5 hash, SHA-256 hash, and uh, some encryption methods. But um, anybody who's a web developer knows that when you're dealing with uh, people's information, for example, you have a website that has user accounts, um, a shopping website, or just whatever. Um, Storing the password safely is very important. Hashing the password is very important because most people use the same password across different types of services online. And uh, if you don't hash it properly, if attacker grabs the database, um, you pretty much compromise almost every account that that user may have uh, across internet services that they use. So one thing I want to you know lay clear is that. Um, when you're hashing passwords, it's not good enough to store it in a, in a database just using a simple hash, um, MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, because when you create a hash, it has the same output. Um, what I mean to say is that the output never changes for the hash, and if you have a, a user base of a hundred or thousands or say millions of people, chances are that, that uh, quite a few people are going to have the same password and if you actually have just a hash um, with no extra security uh, you could compromise many people's passwords uh, many people's accounts online uh, so that's where this conversation comes in because we're going to be dealing with salting and hashing the passwords uh, salting is basically adding a random string of bytes to uh, users passwords so that if two people user A and user Z has uh, the word dog as a password which is a very terrible password um, with the random salt that will be created for each one it will come out hashed differently in the database so if one person is compromised then uh, the other person is not but um, of course you want to choose a stronger password one that's longer that mixes and matches numbers with lowercase uppercase special characters um, so before going too much further, let me go ahead and actually start just creating some simple, uh, a simple create hash or create salt function. You can define the size of the actual salt itself, um, whether you want it to be uh, five bytes or twenty bytes. That's up to you. Let me just finish this one second so you guys can see the output. This new byte is going to be the size of whatever you choose it to be. You're going to do the random generator, creates the random salt, and there we go. So there's your salt function, and you're going to use that as an input parameter to your generate. Uh, hash for the password and the salt. So let's create that function. Generate uh, 256 hash. So Here's where you combine the two. The user has no idea what the salt is. Your application does that for them. And once they actually create the, the hash password, you're going to be storing both the hash and the salt in your database, whether it's Microsoft Access, Microsoft SQL Server, or uh, MySQL. Um, so hold on, where am I at? remember in one of the first videos that I did uh, I created this function here that's going to take any byte array and actually return a hex string output without that 
uh, the hashed output is just uh, garbage characters, which uh, is is fine. But uh, I just like seeing things in in a hex output. So um, with that done, what we're gonna do here is then create a local variable to equal the salt. And as mentioned, it can be any size you want. I'm gonna make it size 10. And what we're gonna do here password equals generate and here we're going to put in the users you can say password I just have a text box where the user can actually put it there uh, and to actually have things outputted so you can see on screen and uh, insult it's going to equal the hashed password so let's just compile this real quick. Let's run it. And uh, say, for example, here's the input for the user. Uh, this is supposedly going to be their password, say, for whatever database you may have. Um, we're clicking to generate salt with hash. You can see every single time I click on it, it's a different hash, it's a different salt, and the reason why is because you create a random salt for every single time uh, that a person enters into a database, uh, their password into a database. Um, or I should say, every single time a person creates an account with a password. Um, and this is great because, again, if you have hundreds or thousands, multiple uh, users are going to have the same password, chances are. Um, that's going to be true, but by creating a random salt, you are assuring that their password is going to be different from everybody else who has the same password. And in your database, what you want to do is actually store this value, and you want to store this value. You don't ever want to store just a hashed version of the password without a salt. You don't want to do that. But when a person tries to log in, you got to grab the salt, and then you got to um, <coughs> excuse me. You want to add the salt to their password to generate the the hash with the salt and compare it to what's in the database and the information is secure. But uh, just for demonstrational purposes, if you look up here, here's the generate MD5 hash, SHA256. No matter how many times I click it, it's the same. Same thing with this. Why? Because we're not actually throwing anything random into it. We're not throwing a salt and that's pretty dangerous because if more than one person had this as their password um, as soon as a, an attacker actually grabs one of this he can you can actually compromise that other person's password not to mention people are actually lazy at choosing passwords so whatever password they have for website A is most likely going to be their password for every other website that they actually have an account for online um, so you don't want to use that you want to use assault with a hash um, and again uh, the reason why this is a bad idea is that a lot of attackers actually have what is called the rainbow table which is basically a lookup table with pre-computed hashes so if they ever crack a database and they see this or this stored there as a password in the, in the password column then once to determine actually what type of hashing function you're using they can compare it to their rainbow table if they find something that matches this then in that hashed uh, or in that rainbow table they'll see next to it oh that's this password they can crack it but by adding the salt in the mix it makes things a whole lot more difficult for the attacker to actually use rainbow tables to crack a password so please keep that in mind and with technology and computers usually faster is better but when it comes to actually hashing um, that is not always true because you basically want a potential cracker or hacker I'm getting confused with the terms there sorry but uh, anyone's trying to crack a password um, you basically want to have a function that takes a little bit of longer time to actually compute and the perfect function for that or perfect hashing function for that is bcrypt because it actually comes with uh, a working factor attribute that you can actually adjust and the good thing about that is as PCs become faster, the computing power becomes uh, much more faster than they are now. You can increase the working factor with basically 
would nullify the increased computing power of uh, future PCs. So by being able to do that, um, you'll make hacking and people trying to crack passwords, uh, you'll make their jobs a whole lot more difficult. Um, but that's pretty much that. Um, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully some people understand it. If you don't understand it, please feel free to leave a comment down below. But uh, I will be doing in a future video um, how to do salt with hash passwords using bcrypt. So just wanted to show this for demonstrational purposes. And uh, that's all. See you guys.